Okay. Oh man, that's not what I meant to do. You are on, so don't do anything silly. Yes. And hopefully, it's recording us talking right now. Too. It says and it goes a little green every time we talk. And Josh is all about, Macy has terrible allergies. He's like, she should do a spoonful of honey every day because the pollen, right, all of that's good stuff. So she pulls this out. I'm like, how do I get this into my teeth? She said, you chew on it like gum. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I want this and I want a tub of honey. Do we even have time to dip? Food, I love it. Had to be carefully orchestrated. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will just kind of sneak in. Yep. Do you need me to introduce you or do you want to just start starting? Okay. I think we're going to go ahead and get started if that's okay with everybody, just because we have a real short time. I know everybody's got to get back to doing what they're doing. Uh, first of all, I think most of you know me, Mandy Gibson, just in case you don't. Um, also, it's a great time to say my office is no longer in McNeil. I'm over in Bomber, so if you need me, you have my cell phone. Most of you have, have my cell phone, um, my email, and then my office over there. Feel free to stop over with questions anytime, right? And come to you. Um, I also have Andy Irving here with me today, and I'm going to be doing the big part of the presentation. But what we're going through is more how to do something. But if you have questions on your actual OneDrive on your computer or mapping or linking, that's something I wanted to introduce Andy in case you haven't met Andy yet. And he is over in McNeil by the love desk. So if you have issues with that, feel free to email him. He's also going to be part of our presentation today as we demonstrate some things. So uh, what I'm going to go over today is the three little handouts that you received. And these will also be posted in the faculty onboarding course. Uh, we're going to talk about the four ways to access your Simpson OneDrive account. And then we won't go through all three of them today. The second one is just how to create a link and add that link within Moodle for your students so they can have a collaborative document. And then also how to embed that document within Moodle. That gets a little bit trickier. It goes into HTML coding, but it's a copy and paste, and I provided instructions with pictures. So if you want to try it out and you get stuck, just email me, call me. I'm happy to help you. So first of all, hopefully everybody's familiar with OneDrive. It's one terabyte. Um, everybody in here linked with your Simpson email, you get one terabyte of OneDrive space, which is a ton of space. Uh, it's a great idea to add thing, add your items to OneDrive in case your hard drive crashes on your computer or you lose anything that way. You'll be able to save uh, all your documents. Another great uh, deal with OneDrive is that it can sync across devices. 
So if you have a smartphone or an Android, you whatever you save on in your OneDrive on your computer, as long as it's Mac, you can pull it right up on your smartphone. I've had times just walking across campus, somebody will say, hey, you have that how to document. I can literally pull it up on my phone, share it with you right there, boom. And that's because everything is synced together. So today, how do you get to your OneDrive? First of all, hopefully you have it mapped to your computer. If you don't, Andy's your man, so you can talk to him about that. Another way to log into your OneDrive account, if you're not on your computer, if you're in a lab, if you're in the lab, if you're somewhere else on someone else's computer. Up here, you'll see I have a sample Moodle course. Up in this course box curtain, and I'm just gonna kind of go straight through these notes here. So if you wanna make notes as we go, but we call it the course box curtain. It says course blocks, but when you click on it, it drops down like a curtain. Up here, on that side, sorry, I'm backwards. Up right, that will link you directly to your account. Now you may have to log in again. So if I were to click on OneDrive up in the curtain, it's going to take me to my login, where I just log in again with my Simpson login. And I'm in my OneDrive account. All of these folders match all of the folders in my map OneDrive on my computer. Like where you have your My Documents, your My Pictures, and My Videos, it's all linked in the same spot, okay? So that's one way to get to OneDrive. That was the first one on your little handouts here. The second one is through webmail. So maybe you want to get to it and you're in your webmail. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here to get to my webmail quickly. So once I'm in my webmail online, if you can follow with me here, if I click on those little dots in the top corner, that also links you to your OneDrive account. And the neat thing about doing it through your webmail, once you're logged into your webmail, you're also already logged into your OneDrive. So you can bounce back and forth between them. Okay. And again, I have screenshots on these handouts for you, and I'm kind of going fast here. So that's the, the second way. The third way, if you don't want to go through your webmail, you don't want to log in, you just want to get to your OneDrive online, there is a link and it's listed in here. I believe you can just type in OneDrive login as well, but there's an exact link if you want to save it on your browser and you can pop right in. It's in the handout here. It's just onedrive.live.com. And that will always go to your same Moodle login where you're putting your Simpson email address and then you're putting your password to get in. And finally, the fourth way is on your smartphone. There is an app on, just go to your app store and look for OneDrive and you'll look for the little blue clouds that I put on here. So that's what you're looking for. I guess they're not blue on your handouts, but um, <laughs> just go ahead and download that app. You will sign in with your Simpson credentials again and now everything is synced to your device. Any questions now that I ran through the different ways you can get to it? Yes. For those folders, can you nest folders within yes. them? Okay. Yep. You can set OneDrive up just like you would set up your My Documents on your computer. It's exactly the same. Okay, so now to the fun stuff. So, OneDrive is a great storage space for all your documents. And a lot of people use Google Drive because it is a collaborative space that everybody can work on at the same time. The really neat thing about OneDrive is we can use Word Online, Excel Online, and PowerPoint Online through OneDrive to make collaborative spaces for people. We're working with other faculty, other staff, and for students as well. Students can use this on their own. They also get OneDrive space. So if you have group projects in your classes, on the third document, which we won't go through, but that's how it teaches the students that you can use. And I can supply you with a PDF if you want to pop in your course. Students can work on OneDrive together without even having to go through you. So it's a great way for them to collaborate. It's also much more secure. When they go to Google Drive, that's out there. But this OneDrive is secured within our own logins. So it's a better way to get the students to collaborate. Okay, so I'm gonna walk exactly through the steps on here. Just so if you have questions, stop me as we go. So when I create documents, there is Word Online, there is Excel Online and PowerPoint Online. They are a little more limited than what we have access to in our Office 365 Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So I like to create it on my computer. Okay. So the first thing I did today is I created a Word document. And this is just, I want my class to sign up for what book they want to do a review on. Okay. So that's the first thing I did, just threw some books out there. So now I've done it, I'm going to save it. So when you go to save your computer, make sure you review your file. Save as, okay. I'm just gonna say browse so I can go to the right spot. If you'll see my OneDrive right here, Simpson OneDrive, click on that. The folder I'm putting in is my Andy and Manda sample folder because you can create, as you see, this looks just like your My Documents, okay? And I'm saving it as a book review sign-up. Now, you notice that little blue 
deal right there, what that means is it's still uploading and making changes. It becomes a full circle in green when it's uploaded, okay? So let's see, we uploaded it. Oh, it's locked because I managed to type. So I have this document. So I've created the document I want the students to do on my Word Online or on my Word document. So I'm going to close it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the place on my computer where it's at. So here's my OneDrive, Simpson College, and I went to the document I created. Okay. So then step no, step C on our doc on our <coughs> sheet here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose View Online. As you notice, it opens up in my web browser, the exact same document I just created. <clears throat> By doing this, this is going to create a space on the web and a link so that when everybody accesses it, they can all access it at that link. Okay. So the next option is to share. Up in the corner up here, on all your documents, you'll see that in the Excel and PowerPoint as well. You click on share and it's going to say, well, how do you want to share it? Okay. The first thing is choose from the drop down of the permissions. The default that comes up with anyone that with a link can edit. This is like kind of like a wiki, like Moodle has a wiki activity you can use. This is very similar to that. Okay. So anyone with a link can edit because I'm going to have my students all sign up on this. So that's first thing. Next, I have to give them individually permission. While this would work awesome for a class of maybe even 13, 20 students to start typing in their names. So if I start typing in Andy here, it is linked through organizations, so their names will pop up. Okay. You click on them, it adds them to the document. When you have 90 some students, it might not work the same, but I'm not sure that we'd have a collaborative document for 90 students, mm -hmm. but we might. Okay. So you just add them to the document. My next step, so now that I've added them, Andy will have access. Okay. The next step is you can, I can send him, I can click send and it'll send him an email. But I don't necessarily want to send all of my students emails that says, now you have access to this. I want to just post a link in Moodle so that when they go there, they just click on it and it opens up and they can upload it. Okay. So to do that, step G, down here at the bottom, it says copy link. I'm going to copy the link. And it creates that shareable link and it copies it, okay? So now we have this link. Now I'm going to go back to my Moodle page. And for the sake of time, I went ahead and created a label. So when you create the label, the same thing, add an activity or a resource down towards the bottom of your options is a label. I created this label. I'm going to go into it. And I just said, this is our book sign up. Please click on the link below to do your book. And this is where I pasted that link. Okay, so that's the link I just copied. Now I'm going to save out and return to my course. So now we're going to go back to the document. I'm going to click on the link because I want to look at it. And it's Andy's turn to sign up for his book. So he's just gone into Moodle and he's going to go ahead and sign up for his book. And as you can see, it's real time as he's signing up for his book and you can see his little cursor up there. <coughs> if I wanted to, my cursor, you can see is up here at the top. We can both edit it just like you would do in Google Docs. Okay. If you notice up at the top, it says save. It also automatically saves just like Google Docs. If it's in the middle of say, it'll say saving and then when it's done, it's saved. Okay. So now, as soon as we close out of it, it's going to be saved that way with Andy's name. So now when the next student comes and clicks, they're going to say, oh, I can't choose super fudge because Andy chose super fudge. Okay. Any questions on that so far? Okay. Oh, yeah. So before, when you were trying to save this, you said, oh, I can't do it. It's locked because I'm in it. Very possibly it's because I was in it online and it was already open. It, this syncs back to my OneDrive mm -hmm. on my computer. So if I were to go, I don't even have to get online once it syncs back to my computer. If I were to open this up in Word, once it's done, it's dump or it's synced with my computer, it's going to be updated there too. So the document actually kind of lives where you create it. It just keeps syncing through all the devices and bringing you back to that. Does that make sense? So it's not just in the cloud, as it were. It's also saved on your computer. Correct. And it wouldn't let you save it on your computer. Because I had because it open. already open online. Yep. And somebody else was already using it. Yep. You got it. Okay, so now we've done it this way, we can open it and see it. Now what if, and I use the same document for the purpose of time, but what if you want your students to see something before they go update it, instead of having to go out to it? You just want to have them see a few things, research it, and then go in and make their changes. Well, that's when we can embed the document. So if some of you have never embedded something, I know you've embedded videos, like if you put your YouTube video, it just pops a video in there, right? 
you can also embed Word, Excel, and PowerPoint online within your Moodle course. Now, here's the, here's the kicker on it. When you embed it, it's the presentation of the document or the PowerPoint. They can't edit it right there, but they can click on it, open and edit here, and it automatically updates. I'm gonna show you how that works. Okay, so we follow the same procedures we had before, where you're, you open it in Word online, okay? But it's, and you have to share it. That's also in the instructions. Make sure you always share it first. What will happen is, if you put this out here and stick a link in your course and you get an email from your students, I don't have access, I can't do it, I need access. It's because you forgot to just add their names. And if you go back in and just add their names, then the next time they come in, they'll be, that's the most common that I've seen is that people just forget to add their names. Okay, so now you have your document here and I wanna take this and I want the students to be able to see it before they even click on it to go make changes, okay? So to do that, you click on File, and down here to Share, and we're going to embed the document. Now this is where it gets a little funky if you're not used to different pixel sizes and embedding, but on these instructions here, you'll be able to see, gives you a few little tips and tricks. This window right here, this is what's gonna be popped into your Moodle page, okay? You can change the size of the text on there. And again, within the notes here, you can read it too. Down below it says 75%. If I click on that, I can say, no, I want my font to be bigger. See how it made it bigger? Okay. Now, looking at this, if it pops it in your Moodle window like that, they're gonna, students are gonna have to scroll back and forth to see things, right? So what these little pixels or these dimensions up here are for, is it takes that little box it's going to stick in there and it makes it bigger okay so for this we're just going to say a thousand pixels and the pixels are just your little dots across the screen all right we're going to go with that now as i changed my 100 percent down here as i change that i don't know if you noticed but this embed code this all this garbly book down here at the bottom it updated that as well it's telling it exactly what it's supposed to put in the so once you get it the way you want it, and you can always come back and edit this. So if you stick there and like, oh, I don't like that, you can come right back out and change the sizes and just stick a new code in, okay? So I'm gonna copy my code, and I'm gonna go back to Moodle, and you can put it in a label. What I did for, this, for today's is I made a page. I do my admin activity or resource and add a page, and that's this page right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit it so you can see what it looks like. Since I just copied the code, I'm going to redo it here. Okay, so what is important to note, like I said before, is it's in presentation view when you pop it in there. So all you're going to, the students are going to be able to do is see what is on there, not actually update it right there. So you have a couple different options, which I'll go through. I just created some instructions that say, for those you can't read it, look at the document below to see what books are still available for review. And then it says, then click on the link below and sign up for the book you want to review. Your choice will be automatically updated in the window below. This is the exact same link that we added before. That's just to get the students out to it, okay? But there is another way, and I'll show you how to get there in a moment. So now I want to embed that huge code. Well, if I paste that code right here, it's going to do nothing, okay? Because it truly is a programming code, right? You have the ability to add that programming code by clicking on this little down arrow to open up your whole text box toolbar. The very last, these two little arrows, the little slash mark in between was called HTML. Now watch what happens when I click on that. It's going to make absolutely no sense to anyone, but that's okay. It doesn't need to because that code you just got is that code already done for you. You go to the end, you paste that code, click on that little guy again, and it's going to appear right down in there for you. And then when we save, So we're back to our main page. Our students will click on it. And there's the presentation view of the document you just created. So I did a thousand pixels wide. You can make it even more if you want to. You go all the way across. So like I said, you can't click in here and change anything. So the you can have the students click on this link. Or, and I put an image on our instructions down here below. There is a little teeny, that little teeny full screen guy at the very bottom corner will open it in Word Online for the students. I like to put the link in there as well because even if you ask the students to click on that, some might not find it. So they have both options. So I like to add the link too. 
So any questions on any of that? I know we're almost to the end here. Or anybody have any ideas on other ways they might use it? Yeah, go ahead. The, if you create a group, the sharing functionality would work with that group, wouldn't it? Or like you're, like, like I just tested teams. it on, like if I created a group when I used New Zealand class for Maker, okay. which I did, I'd, instead of typing in all their email addresses every time, I would just type that group name. And that, when I go to Outlook right now and or try to share a folder to share or a document to share, it allows me to act like I can share yeah, it with a group. I've never done that, but so if that you, would be the shortcut. Right. Share, if you have those. Because you could create a group for your whole class and then just use that every time. Yeah, that's good. I haven't tried that. I'll try that. That's a good one. Um, <clears throat> Anybody else have any other ideas that they might want to share that they might use something like this for in their class? I think it's probably just been really useful to share non traditional assets like video, audio, music. It makes a great way that I can just put it on the OneDrive, and then when the students get to their particular computer that has the software, they just download it from there, and then they can work with it and do a upload. It's really nice for that. Any other questions or I have a request, mm -hmm. totally a personal one, but a lot of us work with several groups, and Andy and I have had several conversations about this already, because. So if you're in another committee and they have a OneDrive for that committee, having more than one OneDrive account can get somewhat sticky. So I haven't found a good solution. I don't, it's still not uploading right, but um, so many of us work in different groups. I keep my OneDrive on my computer for my Kate.Lurseth at Simpson. My slick stuff I have to open in a different browser only and leave that one open. And then the faculty development stuff I have to open in another browser. Um, so it, it, if you have more than one, it's kind of a little bit annoying. So I don't know if you have a, a nice little handout for how to handle that. But um, it, and then my other question is on the phone, can, that, can we look at difference or just we just need to link to one OneDrive account? I've only logged into one at a time. I'm guessing you'd have to do, you probably have to log into the other one. Otherwise, it might try to connect all of them together, be, which creates a problem. No, I was just going to ask, so if you can embed other folders, I don't understand what's the reasoning you need this on OneDrive, but can't you, could you have like a, a folder with all these embedded folders for Slick and a folder for yeah. or not? I don't know. I, I, I don't understand. The problem is they're wanting, like, EPCC is wanting everything to go into that one folder and not have one person like, overseeing that. Overseeing that one. Yeah. <laughs> and so then it, it kind of muddies the water. But we're trying to work together in OneDrive because it's more secure, so. And maybe we need to do teams instead. I was just going to say, I wonder if teams up the monitor. Yeah. If, you can, if you guys haven't looked into teams, you also have access to teams. And I've only dabbled in it a little. Um, but you can share resources on teams as well. And so if you had a group that you wanted to share in teams, can be an app right on your computer where you can share documents and communicate and do chat and emails and everything. Yep. That's Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you fill out your sheets. Hand them to Jody or leave them on the table.